Radio Engineering Graphics and Design Learners, welcome to this very important video as you prepare for your final exams. I'm going to be sharing some of the top tips and some of the most important things I need and I think you can do to prepare yourselves for your final exams. Of course, this masterclass is actually just for All Access members, but I thought, let me throw it open because I know every engineering learner can benefit from what I'm going to be sharing. So I'm going to use some pointers to talk you through how to prepare for your final exams and make the most of engineering graphics and design. So most of you have been with me now for a couple of months and uh, of course the EGD masterclasses is what really are benefiting learners uh, on how to EGD. But these steps for us to get started of course we have to start with the most important thing and that is when are you writing paper one for the November exams it is scheduled for the 2nd of November it's a Thursday and it is a two o'clock session so I think the morning some of you might be writing history but after that you will be writing paper one let's have a look at what does uh, paper one entail so very important for you to understand the layout of paper one. It's going to be a civil paper and it's going to be three hours, 200 marks up for grabs. And of course, this entire paper is in first angle orthographic projection. You're going to get four questions and I've uh, laid it out as follows. You're going to get the first question. It's going to be a civil analytical. That's about 15% of your entire paper which is about 30 marks in total of that 200 and you should be spending around about 20 minutes at the most on civil analytical so a big tip right now this is complimentary have some kind of watch that you time yourself after 20 minutes if you're still busy with that civil analytical you have to stop and go on to the next question question two has got a very interesting statement in the actual documentation that they provide us on how to prepare our learners it says it's going to be a solid geometry question and or interpenetration and development. And that's another 40 marks up for grab, about 20% of the paper. So why would they say solid geometry and or interpenetration? It means it can be either a solid geometry question or an interpenetration and development or it can be both of them. In other words, two questions on both of them. Now my suggestion with you my gut feel says to me that this is going to be both of them most likely they will give you some kind of solid geometry and interpenetration and development and the reason that i'm saying that is because it tests more kids and the ability of more kids and it gives you opportunity if you didn't weren't able to 100 percent do the solid geometry you might be able to get marks at interpenetration and development and vice versa so please prepare yourself to face off on these two questions solid geometry and interpenetration development it's 40 marks both of the, these drawings i think you should be able to nail with confidence your third question is going to be a two-point perspective definite certainty two-point perspective you're going to get that and i've got a couple of great videos especially on the all access membership where i tell you the hack on making sure you nail every two-point perspective so please make sure you watch that video that's another 40 marks and you should be spending on these two questions number two and three about 35 minutes at the most again why because the last question your civil question is going to be 50 percent of your marks that is your civil working drawings it comes to 90 marks on average which is almost half this paper so you need about half the time on it and that's going to be a floor plan there's going to be an elevation and there's definitely going to be a sectional elevation that runs from the foundation all the way through the roof so you have to be sure that you're able to nail those three drawings as part of the civil walking drawing that's going to be question four uh, and in my all access membership i actually speak in detail on each one of these your second paper you've got a couple of days of this because paper two is only on the 15th of november and it is the wednesday afternoon two o'clock i think you're writing english in the morning so you'll have to prepare for this beforehand and make sure you're ready for it not a lot of time on that morning to prepare but that's on the 15th of november let's have a look at what that entails and right after this i'm going to be sharing some top tips that i think some of you might have heard only here and not before so let's have a look here paper two is the mechanical paper paper again 
three hours, uh, 200 marks, and it is in third angle orthographic projection. All the questions on this paper is in third angle orthographic projection. So take a note about that because that is important and it's going to relate to some of the questions that you're going to get. Your first question is going to be a mechanical assembly, guaranteed, roughly about 30 marks, again 20 minutes on it. Your second question is going to be either a loci of a cam or a loci of a mechanism or it could be and. So I, a loci of a cam and a loci of a mechanism. So both of them again, be prepared for them. Again, I've done a couple of master classes on these. It's important for you to take note. You can absolutely smack that. There's no reason you can't get full marks for these two questions. Loki of a cam, loki of a mechanism. The third question guaranteed isometric drawing. No doubt about it. You're going to get a complex isometric drawing. So if you're practicing, make sure you practice the last couple of drawings that you did in class because it's going to be of a high standard. For EGD Masterclass members, how to EGD Masterclass members, there's actually resources that uh, I give with, with memos that shows you plenty of these examples from previous papers and I draw some of them with that. So have a look at that. And then the fourth question, guarantee mechanical assembly. It's going to be third angle orthographic projection and it's going to be complex. 90 marks, you know you're going to get it. So please prepare. Do not make the mistake of thinking you can leave the mechanical assembly and just focus on the others because if you make a mistake here, you're in trouble. That assembly is 90 uh, marks, it's 50% of your paper. So, I know some of you already knew this, but what are the top tips that I can give you right now to help you not only in this first tip, nail EGD, but also the rest of your exams. You need a tennis ball. All right, why you might ask a tennis ball? Well, I'm going to use it as an example. If you take a tennis ball and you just drop it, right, what happens? Does it come back to your hand? It just drops da, 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 and ends up on the floor, right? A little bit of effort put into that tennis ball, it comes back to your hand. A lot of effort, you actually get a return, exponential return. And you are exactly that space in your schooling career. What do you do with this final exam before you? Do you drop the ball and just hope for the best? Or do you put in some effort? Because if you put in effort, people, you are going to get results. At least little effort, you're going to get some return, get that ball back to your hand. But if you focus now, determine, you set out time to work on EGD and other subjects, you won't be, you will be absolutely amazed with the end result. And remember, honestly, the results that you stick, suck with, end of grade 12, you show at every job application for the rest of your life. So please, make sure you do the absolute best. The next step is the mindset that you have at this stage. If you're going to come into this exam with a negative mindset and a set mindset where you say, well, I can't get this done. I'm, uh, what's it worth studying because what is there for my future? If that's going to be your mindset, sorry about that. You might as well stop the video right here. You need a growth mindset. That is to say that I'm not giving up. In the face of challenges, I'm going to face it because I understand that persevering and pushing through these challenges actually ends up in a reward and setting me up for a much better future than just giving up at the moment. So push through, do not give up and start working today. If you can set time aside, prepare for the exams, your mind actually works like a muscle and it grows and it matures and you're able to, under that pressure, give recognition of that which you've learned. So have a positive mindset, would be willing to solve problems and push through, do not give up. Now this one, you might laugh at, all right? Good old sunlight liquid and the cloth. You might ask why. Well, if you're an engineering graphics and design student, I think this is critical. You have to, before the day that you write your final exams, both paper one and paper two, you need to wash all of your instruments, your drawing board, the ruler, the triangles, all of that. You have to wash it, make sure you've got the correct lead in, make sure your, shop, your uh, compass is sharp, Make sure you've got all the instruments, the French curves, etc., a razor that you require in the exams. Be well prepared. And if you wash them, it's going to make a massive difference. They're going to be sliding much easier on the paper and you're not going to have the amount of smudges. And so it's going to have a better end product. So please take the time to wash your instruments. 
my second last tip is for you to draw, draw, draw. Confidence in EGD only comes from drawing. I can show you how many videos. I can charge you how many times. If you do not sit down and draw, 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 I would say in preparation for each one of these papers, at least three to four drawings in each of those questions is a must. And you can't wait for the night before. You can't binge on YouTube videos to th and think that's going to make you engineering, graphics and design learn. No, you have to draw, draw yourself because it's in that that your hand gets trained. You get the skill. You're able to solve problems. And if you're confronted with the same, same problems in the exam, you're going to be able to smack them. So please draw, draw, draw. Then, and this I'm not saying likely to just recruit members. If you are a member, you got access to every EGD masterclass. And there will be a couple of uh, scheduled in the coming weeks. I'll do some additional ones for you to prepare you for your final exam. I've already done a video on every question that we've discussed now, which you can follow. And added to it, there's also exam papers with memorandums that is available to you as all access members dating back almost to 2000 and whatever that you can use in practice and preparation so please consider becoming a member and drawing with me as you prepare yourselves for the final exam the very last tip i can give you is to keep drawing in this time leading up every opportunity you have you need to keep drawing to gain your confidence right here that is it that's the end of this How to EGD Masterclass. I didn't draw on this one because I thought this is so important in preparing you for your final exam. So in the comments, please share with me what are the things that you want me to focus on in the coming weeks? What are the drawings that you struggle most or the components, specific components in drawings? Because then I can make videos just focusing on those big mistakes or troubles that you have in certain drawings. And I don't need to draw the whole drawing because most of that you really understand. So please share with me in the comments what are the things that you want me to make videos with in the coming weeks. All right, I back you. You can do this. Have a positive mindset. Thank you for watching and joining me on How to EGD. All the best for your upcoming final exams. What a privilege. Cheers.